Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Oroban Park. After leaving Tokyo, I finally get to begin my journey in search of the small life houses scattered across Japan, giving life to the punk scene. The first step will be Sendai, heart of the Miyagi region, just north of Tokyo. And after that comes... Uh... Uh... Wait a minute, hold up. Many of you watched and liked the previous episode, something that makes me very, very happy. And some of you even came back to me with a great question. Yeah, Filippo, but what is punk? <sighs> okay, I get it. That's on me. Maybe a short one-on-one -on -one course wouldn't hurt. What if we go back a few years before moving on? While past world Japan was starting to absorb influences from Western music and develop genres like blues, jazz and rock and roll, an American music critic used for the first time the term punk to define a band, question mark and the mysterious, as young and inexperienced. This is where it all began, with the term spreading quickly and soon the first answer source of the genre came true. Stooges, New York Dolls, Velvet Underground. A punk rocker. The new craze, they tell me. In 1976, the Sex Pistols appeared on a television talk show cementing in the minds of every British housewife that punk is dirty, rebellious and vulgar. Rough, simple. Punk is us against them. That's just their time for it. Which one? Nothing, a rude word. Next question. No, no, what was the rude word? Shit. It didn't take long before news of this brand new genre reached the shores of Japan in the middle of its economic boom, always itching to learn something from the outside world. And this brought forward the first Japanese punk bands like Lizard and Friction, who took elements from glam rock and New York punk, while still keeping in touch with the style of Japanese popular music. These artists were among the Tokyo Rockers, the movement which represented the first generation of Japanese punk in the capital, between the end of the 70s and the beginning of the new decade. Opposed to the positive outlook of mainstream culture of the period, punk musicians painted a more grim picture, speaking about the non-stop urban development and the grey residential districts distorting the human relationships. The Tokyo Rockers even appeared in director Ishii Sogo's Bakure Tsutoshi, a movie set in a post-apocalyptic world, where they take the roles of gangs, fighting against the construction of a nuclear power plant set up by the government. With the arrival of the 80s, punk simplicity and DIY approach started to leave some room to more hybridization with other genres, and so hardcore, post-punk, and oi were born among the others. The expansion of the first punk scene came to its climax in August 1985, where a giant show was held in Shinjuku, hosting the biggest bands from not only Tokyo but finally from across the country. Entering in the 90s, the Blue Hearts were the ones to push punk music under the mainstream spotlights, with hymns like Linda Linda. And from here, like it was happening in the West, punk started to develop some more variations. Ska, garage punk, melodic hardcore, pop punk and so on. The globalization had already started, with bands like High Standards being published by Fat Records, the independent label of NoFX's lead Michael Burkett. An explosion of pop-punk bands was ready for a new generation of Japanese teens. Stain Spunks, Ga 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 SP, Going Steady. Today in Japan, like the rest of the world, the punk phenomenon has shrunk, and instead of dying, it went back to being a smaller circle, thanks to the local and online communities and live houses. And this was Professor Filippo's small history lesson, hope you enjoyed it. So, shall we move on? It's nice to finally be outside of Tokyo, for how filled of attractions and incentives the Japanese capital is, it is also very crowded, non-stop and in some way very exhausting. Seems like I've arrived right before a Matsuri, a traditional Japanese festival, for which I get to reach the shrine of Aoba Castle in time to take a peek at the preparation to some sort of dance. Sadly, I am to attend somewhere else, at Sendai Birdland, to listen to some local bands. Luckily, there are still a few punks outside of Tokyo, and that's where we're headed.
maybe it's the small size of the club or maybe it's because it's the only live house hosting some punk shows. But I have to say I was surprised by the amount of people. The place was really crowded. Compared to Tokyo, I have little time to stop in other regions, and so after only one evening at the Birdland, I hop on another train, this time headed even more north. Sapporo, here we come! <laughs> to visit Club Counteraction, a famous live house active since the 90s, I had to take a few trains and go way north, to Sapporo, the heart of the Hokkaido region. <laughs> Hokkaido ended up being my favorite place in this entire trip. As you can imagine, it's much colder, almost feels like Canada or Alaska. Yet the people here are more friendly, warm and relaxed. They enjoy great food, fresh air and music. Oh, and of course, the occasional Oktoberfest with German music. That's local tradition, right? Counteraction has a long history. The posters and flyers on every inch of the walls have been here for a long time. Regulars move around and greet each other like they live in the place. of young bands that try their best to keep the public's attention, a band from the old guard likes up the small but dedicated crowd, getting everyone riled up and ready to sing along. Thanks to some shelter by my host friend, I had the time to spend some extra days enjoying Sapporo and soaking into its atmosphere. But now it's once again time to leave! If the move from Tokyo's humidity to Hokkaido's chill weather has been a shock, taking a plane from the north of Japan to the sunny south was even worse. 
After a couple of days of break spent on the beaches of Kagoshima, the lower part of the Kyushu region, the southern island of Japan, with its almost tropical climate, I go to Fukuoka, the region's biggest city, in search of new artists. Sadly, the search did not bring any results, as I stumbled in the city when no new gigs were on the horizon. But it looks like I'm in luck, and the last minute tip about a club named Cheers make me rush in the city of Kitakyushu. After a short tour of this city, I head to the club, very crowded and lively. <laughs> the nature of the places outside of Tokyo, fewer and landmarks of the local scene, or maybe it's the past two weeks of traveling alone, or maybe it's because I'm always the only foreigner at this kind of evenings, but this was the first time where I felt like a complete stranger. The people interacting with each other clearly have been lifelong acquaintances, with musicians patting each other on the back between each beer. Or maybe this is how the punk scene survives, by becoming a small family of friends. I felt so embarrassed by my young presence. The clumsy gaijin with this indiscreet camera that I was not in the mood to ask for an interview with musicians. Or to be more precise, the only one who gave me the permission for a small one ended up completely drunk halfway through the evening. But this is okay, maybe for another night I can just sit back and enjoy some music. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
while I hope on the next train I realize I am only halfway through the journey. And in the next episode we will finally be in Osaka. Thanks once again for sticking with me and I'll see you next time.